This telescope's an old timer, just like me. This is a mid 1950s Edmonds Scientific six inch Newtonian, Edsco Newtonian six inch. Um, an interesting story about this telescope, I purchased this back in uh, probably the very late 70s, early 80s for $250 from a retired gentleman's widow after he passed away. And uh, he and I had looked through this telescope a few times together and we had used it for the students at school. Anyways, uh, an interesting story here. This uh, telescope was taken down by my two sons and myself to Southern Kentucky in August of 2017 to view the total eclipse of the sun. As it is a metal tube, you can do some solar observing and not catch the dang thing on fire. You also will notice a screen up here above the eyepiece, and this is of course where the sun would have been projected that day, and then we could just look at the uh, screen and see all the partial eclipses leading up to the total eclipse. Uh, once the total eclipse happened, we did remove the screen and look directly at the total eclipse of the sun and we could see solar flares beyond the limb of the moon. It was safe to look at the spectacle for about two and a half minutes until the sun reappeared and by then we had already timed it on our watches and removed our eyes from the telescope. Nonetheless, uh, it worked spectacularly well. The images on the screen were wonderful. The image of the total eclipse itself was, was magnificent to say the least. Um, this is an equatorial mount that we have down here holding the telescope up. You'll see a set of counterweights down here and those are intended to offset the parabolic mirror that sits at the, at the very bottom of the tube and has some weight to it. The telescope also contains clock drive. When you look at any object in space through a telescope, you're amazed because it seems like the object, whether it be Jupiter or Saturn or Mars or what have you, it looks like it's moving right across the field of view. But of course, it is in motion, but that's not the motion you're noticing. The motion you're noticing, obviously, is the rotation of the Earth. And once you're zeroing in on a small space, uh, in the sky, you can really notice the Earth's rotation quite easily. So the clock drive would cause the telescope to slew slowly towards the west as the Earth rotates towards the east, keeping the object in the field of view uh, for all of the people that want to line up and take a look. Otherwise, uh, after every second or third person, you have to re-aim the telescope. So, uh, the light path through the telescope is pretty simple. Uh, this is a Newtonian reflector which means that we have an open end for the light to enter. The light travels down the length of the tube and reaches a parabolic mirror at the bottom, a slightly curved parabolic mirror. The light strikes the mirror and then is reflected back up the tube into a smaller and smaller area until it reaches this spider right here, which is holding a mirror at a 45 degree angle. And the light will then reflect off of that mirror from the parabolic mirror up to this plane mirror and then on up through the eyepiece and your eye would look through the telescope right there. Obviously you can't put your head down here, you would block the light coming into the objective mirror. So these telescopes you look at the light coming out the side of the telescope. You may say, well doesn't that mirror inside there block the light from getting to the primary mirror? A small amount of light is blocked, yes not enough to make a really large difference and the spider is put in such a way it's really just metal straps holding the mirror in the center is what the spider is it's it's uh, alleviated as much of the metal as possible in order to block the light coming in the least amount that uh, is necessary uh, the eyepiece is the actual magnifying lens right here and you can see that it's mounted on a rack and pinion device so in this case, you can focus it by moving the uh, magnifying lens a little further or closer away from the light coming into the primary mirror and closer or further away, uh, in this case, from this screen. So that's your focusing right there. A little uh, old and a little rusty, kind of like its owner. On the side here, you can see a sighting telescope. And this is a very wide field uh, refractor that's built right onto the side, much as you would with a gun. If you had a sighting telescope on a gun, that's, that's gonna let you see your target. 
in much greater detail here, it lets you view a larger part of the sky. So you can pick out your target, get it in the crosshairs of the sighting scope, and then if you're aligned, you'll be able to see it through the uh, main magnifying lens. If you don't do that, and you try to find the object with just this main magnifying lens, you're looking at too small of a section of the sky, and you're swinging it around trying to find it, so, you know, you could, you could aim it at the moon easily, but any other smaller, dimmer object is going to be very difficult to see. You need to get it centered in your sighting scope first in order to see it in your magnifying lens and through the main part of the telescope second. The reflecting telescope is really a light bucket. And a light bucket uh, just collects light the way a water bucket would collect water. The bigger and the fatter the bucket, the more light you're going to collect. The more light you can collect, the more you can magnify the light, satisfactorily and you can also uh, the more light you can collect the image looks brighter and your resolution between the darkness of space and the object that you're looking at is is, is greater uh, the uh, a reflecting telescope you can make larger than a refracting telescope because you can make much bigger mirrors than you can lenses uh, lenses traditionally have a problem called chromatic aberration where you can get uh, reds and blues around the edges of a, a lens if it's not a high quality lens. Uh, the mirrors won't do that because the light does not pass through, it only reflects off of. Uh, if you think about it, there's really only one major optical surface in a uh, reflecting Newtonian telescope and that's the parabolic mirror. Yes, the plane mirror does need to be ground down and does need to be of high quality, but that, that's not as much of an undertaking as uh, having a curved mirror and manufacturing that. So the optics are the primary mirror, the plane mirror, and your magnifying lens. And you can put any lens in the telescope. Uh, different lenses would give you greater magnification. And a simple rule for a telescope is to use, for amateurs, the least amount of magnification because the image is brighter, it's much easier to focus, so you can make a sharper image. The contrast is better, and it's more satisfying, too. It gives you a little wider field of view, and um, for a number of reasons, you always want to start with the lens with the least power first, and then work your way up. And as you work your way up, sometimes the image gets a little bit less satisfactory each time. So with, a, with this telescope, I've seen all hundreds of different things over the years. And uh, Jupiter looks good, and you have to, you, you have to understand this isn't um, like a flyby of a space probe on Jupiter, where you would look through the eyepiece and Jupiter would look as big as the field of view. It's going to look very small in the field of view, but it's going to look very bright, and because of the quality of the optics, you can actually see the stripes of the cloud tops on Jupiter, and you can see some of its moons, usually four of its moons, the Galilean satellites, as they're known, uh, beside Jupiter. And um, Saturn, you can see its rings, quite stunning. Um, you can see some of Saturn's rings. If you look at the moon, you're looking at the whole moon in the field of view. So the moon is very large because it's very close to the Earth. So when you look at the moon with this telescope, uh, the moon fits into the, pretty much the entire field of view. Whereas with the larger telescopes, we're gonna be showing you in just a moment when you look at the moon, even with the least powerful lens, you only see maybe a third or a fourth of the moon at one time because the image is just much greater. So there's the Edmonds Scientific 6-inch Newtonian, and you always need about 4 to 6 inches of a reflecting telescope to even get in the ballpark of having a view that is going to make you use the telescope for the rest of your life.